Hello everyone. Today I wanted to go over binoculars for astronomy and the kinds of things you need to look out for when purchasing a pair of binoculars for astronomy. Now here I have a pair of 10 by 50s. So to begin with I'm going to explain what that means. 50 is the size of the objective lens on the front of the binoculars there, those glass bits at the front, and the 10 is the magnification, how much it magnifies the sky. Now other bits of the binocular are the eye lenses there. You've got these fold-up cups on a lot of binoculars. On cheaper binoculars there can sometimes just be fold-up, fold-down cups. And what this enables you to do is if you have them all the way down, you can wear a pair of glasses and hopefully see, hopefully see the full field of view. But that does partly depend on whether you've got long, eye, long enough eye relief. So when you're looking in the specs, look for about at least 15 millimetres eye relief for your binoculars. These pair of Pentax SPs, these have got 20 mil eye relief. So these are absolutely fine for using glasses. But if you don't use glasses, you can just simply fold those up. Now there's another lever there and that's called a dioptra. And what that's for is so you can match two eyes, because humans have two eyes, of, if you're lucky, and usually they're not exactly the same. So what you do is you use the non-dioptra side to focus using that wheel on the top, just there. You move that left and right to focus with that eye lens. Then you close that eye, open that one, and then you adjust the dioptra there, not touching the focuser until you've got a sharp view with that eye as well. And then at that point, you've got these eye lenses focused for your eyes. This pair of binoculars is really good because it's actually got a lock on the focuser as well. A lot don't come with that. And that's one of the, the good things about these Pentex SP binoculars. One of the reasons I got these actually. As a general rule of firm, the lower the magnification, the bigger the field of view because your, your object will look smaller with more room around it. Now that isn't set in stone because it does depend on the types of eye lenses that are in here. So just pay attention to the field of view on the binoculars when you're looking at the specs as well. Now there's two different types of binoculars. These are the classic, what probably everyone knows, poor prism binocular and they tend to sort of jut in a little bit there because of the arrangement of the prisms inside but you can also get roof prism binoculars that tend to be more compact and roof, roof prism binoculars tend to be below sort of 50 mil objective lens binoculars quite often at 40 mil and poorer prisms like this go from like 40 mil all the way up to we can get them smaller than that but they go from like 30 40 mil but all the way up to i had a, i owned a pair that was 110 objective lenses and they magnified 28 times and they were obviously very high power binoculars for astronomy and for sort of viewing things far away for daytime use. Uh, they were excellent but they were massive and even on a tripod they were hard work. So handheld I'd say a 50 by 10 is kind of your limit and the magnification is important for that because the higher the magnification, the harder they will be to keep still. If you have a few coffees a day like me, then you might be better off with a 7 by 50 so you've got that low power. But there is something else to consider, just to confuse matters, and that's the um, exit pupil. And that's the light coming out the back. How you work out your size of your exit pupil is to divide the objective lens diameter by the magnification. So this is 50 divided by 10. So the exit pupil on this binocular will be five millimeters. And the story doesn't end there because that's very dependent on the type of prism that's in your binocular. These have got what's called a back, back four prism which is the best kind of prism to have in binoculars because that means they're large enough and they've got a high enough refractive index that they let enough light through that they give you that full five millimeter exit pupil but you can get a lot of the cheaper ones are back seven which are absolutely fine but they won't be quite as bright and you'll notice if you hold them up to the light the the light coming out the back of the eye lenses 
will be kind of a diamond shape. It'll have little grey cutouts. And so you can probably guess that you're going to have less light entering your eye and therefore any images you view with the binoculars will be slightly less bright. And with astronomy, we're in the game of trying to capture those photons, those faint details. So back four prisms, if you're looking at the specs for a binocular, they're the ones to go for if you can stretch to it, definitely. Now, effectively, a binocular is two telescopes strapped together, isn't it? So another thing to consider is the quality of the binocular, because if you spend, say, 20, 30 pounds on a brand new pair of binoculars, I guarantee there's probably a 50% chance when it arrives, that barrel won't be aligned with that barrel. And that's because quite often the, the prisms, they can't afford at that price point to mount the prisms in proper cages and they're kind of just like spot glued in place and they come out of alignment really easy and you quite often have to send them back at that price point but you can get sort of ones that are likely to arrive collimated for about 50 pounds and i'll put some links below to ones that i recommend for that Exit pupils really important, the size of your prisms, quality of your prisms, but one more thing to say is your coatings. If you've got a lot of light bouncing around inside the binocular, they're probably not gonna be great for astronomy because you won't have good enough contrast. So you, look, you wanna look for some, where it says, you're looking for the words fully multi-coated, ideally, which means that all the air to glass surfaces have got multiple coatings on to keep stray light at bay. Um, you can get multi-coated, single-coated, non-coated, all that kind of thing, but fully multi-coated is the best one to look for when you're looking at your specs. Now, I'm aware that all these things that I'm pointing out obviously come at a price point, so you've just got to sort of like weigh up what thing you want in a binocular. I mean, the important thing I'd say is to make sure you've got one with a semi-decent prism in it that's going to arrive collimated and it's not going to be too undersized that you're actually getting the light through because a lot of the cheaper binoc really cheap binoculars like for example you can get like 70 by 15s that are fairly cheap i won't say who who sells those but that they're, they're, they're not actually like really a 70 mil binocular they're more like a 63 mil binocular because of the light they they block as they're going through the light path the prisms aren't big enough to let all the all the light from that 70 mil objective all the way through out the back. So just bear, just bear in mind when you're buying a binocular that you need to sort of like think where you put in your money. Because, um, wow, do you get what you pay for with binoculars? Like, seriously. I've, I started out with a pair, my first pair of astronomy binoculars. I, I made the mistake that I've pointed out to you guys. I bought some £29 ones off the internet. And literally when I was holding them up to the sky, the bridge of the binocular was bending, distorting, just by having the weight of the binocular on my, on my face. So it, you, just, you just get what you pay for. Like I think if your budget's around £20, just go on eBay and get like a vintage pair of 10 by 50s or 7 by 50s off eBay. And they should serve you fine with the caveat that obviously you need to check out with the seller that they're they're collimated and check their, their score and everything that they're a good seller but if you can stretch to 50 pounds then you should be able to get a, a passable pair of binoculars now what else is there to talk about now I, I did talk about the exit pupil quite a lot but the other thing to consider from the human perspective is that as your eyes get older the ability for your pupil to dilate becomes less and less. So when you're, say, 18 years old, your pupil can dilate to, dilate to about 8 millimetres. So you can quite comfortably get away with a 50 by 7 binocular, which will give you an exit pupil of 7.16 millimetres or something like that. So you'd be able to get all that light and cram it into the back of your eye and you get the full bright image from those binoculars. But by the time you're in your 60s, you're probably only getting your eyes dilated to about five, four, five, six, if you're very lucky, millimetres. So bear that in mind that if you're 70 and you're looking to buy a pair of binoculars, then the um, you're probably not optimising things by getting a 50 by seven 
times binocular with an exit pupil of 7.1 millimeters because you're not going to fit that 7.1 millimeter cone of light coming out the back of the binocular into your eyes that only dilate to 4.7 millimeters for example so you're just wasting some of that light so yeah i think i've covered everything now haven't i or most things so i'm going to leave it there because this, this video is i'm just jabbering on now so i hope you enjoyed the video hope it was useful and if you like this kind of content i usually do a lot more sort of in-depth videos than this really with flashy graphics and stuff but i've just started a new job which is fabulous because i'm working for first light optics um but i've not got a lot of time <laughs> to do other things at the minute so i'm, I'm just try, i just thought do a quick video what can i do i know about binoculars so I grab my binoculars grabbed a little table to put on the floor and i've done it so hope that was useful if you like the content consider subscribing give me a thumbs up all that kind of nice stuff and hopefully i'll see you in the next video take care bye